protesters demonstrate against racism in downtown Raleigh. The tone tonight, passionate but calm after Confederate statues came down from the state capitol. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Maggie Newland. CBS 17's Imani Payne is live in downtown Raleigh. And Imani, this comes a night after two Confederate statues were toppled and more statues removed today. Yeah, well, Maggie, it is a much different scene out here tonight than last night. All we've got left now are uh, these few small groups of protesters out here, and they've been pretty peaceful for the most part, as people say they're now focused on unity and really moving the conversation forward. People taking in what's left of this monument in downtown Raleigh. After protesters pulled down two Confederate statues and hung them by their necks Friday night. It's really emotional. Um, I think it's important for my kids to see what change is happening right now and uh, us as white people to um, own up to our history and understand our history. A sense of calm now settles over the Capitol as dozens peacefully protested, calling for legislation change and to defund the police. The group then heading downtown, marching through cars, even stopping traffic to make their voices heard, energizing people passing by. We had been down so long, praying the Lord, we had been lifted up by the protesters. Now maybe y'all will understand. This is the community, and they're supposed to represent the community. Then come out here. And here up. The demonstration ending at Nash Square, where organizers vowed to keep the momentum going, saying they'll be back every night until real change happens. Again, very peaceful out here tonight. There were some officers out here blocking traffic, but really nothing much more than that. Now the group says they will be back out here tomorrow evening for a candlelight vigil. For now, we're live in downtown Raleigh. Imani Payne, CBS 17 News. All right, thank you, Imani. Meanwhile, Governor Roy Cooper issued a statement today explaining why he ordered more Confederate monuments removed. The governor said monuments to white supremacy don't belong in places of allegiance. He added if the legislature had repealed their 2015 law that puts up legal roadblocks to removal, quote, we could have avoided the dangerous incidents of last night. Some community members say it should have happened sooner, while others aren't sure it was the right thing to do. Now that it's torn down, what do you look at to show the disruption that was in the life of people so many years ago? The only thing that's concerning to me is why did it take for the citizens to actually bring these, pull these Confederate monuments down for you to finally step up and say, um, we're going to take these before they destroy them? Capitol Police, the DOT, and Raleigh Police all assisted in the removals. No word on where the statues are now being stored. The spokesperson for the State Department of Public Safety revealed several officers were hurt Friday night when they tried to stop protesters from pulling the statues down. Pamela Walker says after preventing the initial attempt to remove a statue, officers remained on the grounds to maintain public safety. Walker tells us one officer suffered a fractured wrist, another had to be treated for a cut to the hand, and a third had some kind of liquid thrown in their face. One person was arrested and charged on multiple counts, including assault on a law enforcement officer. Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest is slamming what he calls the governor's inaction when protesters toppled the statues, pointing out that the incident happened next to the governor's office. Forrest, who is running against Roy Cooper, went on to say, quote, when our elected leaders turn a blind eye to chaos, destruction, and disorder, society begins to unravel, end quote.